Hello there, my friend. How you doing? Um, I want to tell you today about my experience with with non-duality, which is great because it's it's a lot of changes have been happening in my life, just kind of like effortless. Where before it seemed that I was stuck and trapped in some monotonous rut, and then as I discovered these principles and meditated, not just not just not just try to intellectualize it, but rather practice it or just let it happen, I guess. Sitting, as some would call it. My life changed dramatically. It all started like four years ago with, with my practice of meditation through Headspace. And I, I thought it, of, of it more as a, a discipline, you know, a tyrannic discipline to be calmer and resilient and, and, and kind of like working out in the gym just to get better attention. And then that went on for a couple of years until I met Sam Harris two years ago. And that's where something changed. It's like, oh, there is something more to this than, than working a, a attention muscle. Probably it's something more enlightening than that. That led me to some talks and asking questions about what does this all mean? What, what? What is this fuzz all about? Is, all, is this all new age crap or is this, you know? And no, I, I, I really felt there was something more inquisitive or deeper than just a, a sleeping pill or a, a Xanax for stress. And about six months ago, I ran into Rupert Spira and now Francis Lucille. And I think they, they really have great pointers. They have great pointers to what? To knowing that um, we are not a separated individual. But it, it's like, and that's hard to explain. I will try to put these into words. But I think I lived a lot of my life thinking that I'm this body bag. And I I am inside the brain somehow or this, or this skeleton muscle somewhere here in between what we call the skull. And that's where I was operating and choosing what I was going to do next all the time, depending on mathematical models or whatever I had at the time, you know, like a balance matrix, a weighted balance matrix of when I'm getting on the street, I stop and I'm thinking, I'm analyzing, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And we, we then direct the body as this or that. And that's kind of like what it always felt, right? And I was always going or thinking or going to thought about choice, about crafting my life about moment to moment and you know that's great and all but when I uh, when that happened I don't I when did that happen I don't know but things exponentially have changed in the past year or so I believe some of my acting training has to do with it but it's also just the practice of meditation and knowing that there is something before thoughts and feelings and the body, and those are just, uh, they appear, but I am not that. I am not that body. I am not those thoughts that I tended to identify myself with. And those came or, or usually came with other emotions, right? So uh, like I noticed these certain patterns where I was sad and the same thoughts came over and over again. But now it's not, it's, not, it's not that I was stuck in that story and I wasn't operating as those thoughts were, you know, I, I, I thought I was okay, I'm sad, this is what I do. But then it's, it's, it's as if I was just observing that and all of a sudden those patterns started changing by themselves. To be honest, that's when I look back and it's like, oh my God. I notice I've changed because I'm, I'm I'm doing different things than I used to do before. I'm my relationships are changing. I'm I'm opening to people. I'm being more vulnerable. I have more confidence in myself. But it's not a a a tyrannical forcing that we tend to do sometimes. I don't know if you've done this, but maybe there's times where you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this thing, and it's, that's scary. I'm gonna talk to that girl, or I'm gonna stand in public. And I'm going to speak, but you can feel that. You can feel that it's like um, you're stretching that rubber of your homeostasis or, or comfort zone. 
and you can feel it, right? And I'm not saying that's nor good nor bad. It's just a method or a way. But it seems to me that it's like trying to be inside a rubber ball and like trying to stretch it from there. And then we're trying to get out and then you, you stretch it so you feel like a pull, right? And it keeps you like getting you, getting you back in. But then it's like, oh, I can jump. And if you move from here, it's like, oh, maybe I, I didn't need all that stretching, all that pulling and all the judging that came from whether I could or I couldn't do that. And that's kind of what I felt. You know, I was, I was opening up. I was, I was just receiving thoughts instead of actively trying to grasp what to say in social encounters or, or with girls I found attractive or in acting, you know, I, that's, that's something that I'm really working on because, you know, we're a process, but whatever it is, I believe that there is this higher power, higher source, and we are it. All right. So this material realm is just a manifestation, a, 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 a unfolding of a higher consciousness, but we tend to mistake it for everything that is, including our bodies. And when we identify with those habits and those patterns, of course, we're going to protect them in a way. It's like, it's like I don't know, when you've, you've probably seen people that identify so strongly with, a, with, a, with, a, with an ideology or, or some kind of ism, you know, a religion, a, a politics, or now scientism, all these things we can get so attached to them then we end up protect them, protecting them as if they were us. So of course we got scared to leave them and then we become rigid and we stay stuck there instead of asking questions. What if, what if I'm wrong? How do I know I'm right? And we, we close off to all these, these magnificent experiences or, or knowledge that can come from not knowing. And that cloud of unknowing is, is out there. And somehow it, it gets shaped into a material form and, and we are avatars or vessels for that in a certain way or manner as other conscious beings are for other types of consciousness. So that, I think that's beautiful. It just kind of makes me feel humble and excited and, and this itch just arises for like curiosity. You know, the, Richard Feynman said the pleasure of finding things out and I love that. Whatever it is, you know, we're unique individuals. We have a unique portal, unique avatar. We, we have similarities, of course. And we really, it's not about like creating something original or whatever, but rather just receiving and expressing whatever that's coming. It's not, it's not whether it's good nor bad, but it's allowing and getting out of our way, using so much energy to, to stay stuck because we do that. We use a lot of tension to keep the body in a certain shape or to block certain emotions, right? But we don't have to do that. Of course, it's a lot of, 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 of opening up, of training, of facing our fears, of letting go. But at the end of the day, there is a force, an underlying universal force that is driving everything. And you ask me, what? Why? How? You have proof? Well, not really, but... Well, in my own experience, I would say that. It's like my life just unfolds when I'm not getting in the way and that's when changes happen or where I, when I feel happy and I'm like, I can be under stress, we're working on a project, but I can do things with less force or effort than what I usually think I need or want with other people, you know, especially limiting beliefs of whether I'm enough, whether people will like me, whether, whether I will be able to do this or won't be able to do that. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Never say that. Brian Cranston, I'm learning his, learning, reading his biography, he said that he went to Central Park one day because he was really fucking sad. And he ran into the, into the New York Marathon and he saw a guy crossing and he was taking pictures because he was sad and he takes pictures when he's sad. You know, we all do that. And I, I do that at least. And, and it's beautiful because he took a picture and then he said like, fuck, I, I, I won't be, I will never be able to do that. And fuck, you ran that marathon like a year after that or two years after that. Isn't that great? The can'ts or shoulds or shouldn'ts are all in here. We can let that go. Let that go. We don't need that to limit ourselves. Let, let us challenge all the rules that are there, out there, 
Let us be shaped by the laws that are out there, whatever they are, and question them, of course, you know. And let us believe in ourselves. Let us believe in ourselves and believe in others. Because that's what we have going for us. And that's what makes dreams come true. So believe in that. Believe in your dharma. Believe in yourself. It's a process. And of course, there will be moments of doubt. But let's get back up. Let's get back up. Let's fall forward. And we usually need a lot less effort for that. Because, uh, you know, it's so hard to stay in bed all day. There is this force that just like driving us. Let's embrace it. Let's flow with the river. Let's flow with the river. And I think it's easier. Wu Wei, my friend. Wu Wei is what we need. Just let's, let's just follow that and open up and share that story with others because we can inspire each other. And that's um, some of my reflections that I'm doing. I'm actually on a Francis retreat right now. Ah, but that's not interesting to you. If you're interested in something else, maybe you like this video. I hope you have a great time. And I would love to connect. So if you're into this kind of stuff, here's my Instagram, my email, and uh, shoot me a message. I'll answer whenever I can. And subscribe if you like the channel. Have a good one. Bye-bye.